Hey, hello. So this week, my rotten mind got excited with abstract syntax tree. I am JavaScript slash TypeScript developer by trade, and uh, I know for a fact when TypeScript is processed, it generates in memory a sense of a program, you could say in a uh, JSON manner, where the uh, code start out starts out with a basic node, and if there's like a loop of some sort, then it compares uh, if i is less than the amount of element in this case, and uh, there's stuff in the loop and whatever. So it creates a tree of possible operations uh, within the current uh, scope of whatever there is. So. As a simple piece of code, I decided to transpile with TypeScript node, node package uh, a really simple code. And in AST Explorer, you can see that a console log is an expression which has an identifier and its uh, name or escape text is console. And the uh, uh, name of uh, so this is an expression a console and the name which we, we call is a log so this is quite specific structure and uh, as arguments uh, the console log uses a string literal literal in this case and uh, yeah there's hello world so what I did I npm installed a TypeScript for my simple project. I have the exact same code here with hello world and everything. TS, it accepts the code I give it. And if we, if we go way down, I am starting to print a tree. Just an order to be uh, vocal about what the thing actually does. Let me run the entire J J JavaScript code. And it gives something interesting. <clears throat> so the stuff I print out, the result of the entire AST traversal is something different. As you can see, there was a console log with hello world. And this thing I print out is print ln hello world. The definition of give message was function. So this is a TypeScript code, right? And the message is at str, some string. And there's further modifications. Return message will be something here. Then there's something else added to owned. <coughs> what I essentially did, I made Rust code with my JavaScript <coughs> AST traversal. And uh, it actually can work. Oh yeah, so that uh, I'm not uh, lying, so you can uh, see I'm not lying. I can add stuff like uh, live dem, demo compiling. So let me save that. And uh, when I run the code again, live demo compiling message will be to own. So I'm generating Rust code with TypeScript's AST um, traversal methods. <clears throat> so when I get my first initial source file, uh, like uh, AST, which is literally this, I guess in JSON format it's this. There's a list of statements I can look at. And there's some more expressions. And um, so I'm going into print tree. I literally check if uh, the node I'm looking at is expression statement. So 
yeah this is not obvious so there's a way to understand if this is a uh, expression statement by kind so typescript uses heavily the kind thing to understand if this is expression statement if this is like property access stuff a string literal would be like 10 i know that already so if this is the expression statement uh, I'm going into print expression statement. Go to definition. Yeah. Oh, I'm looping. Uh, and there's stuff to check. Uh, if this um, expression statement is a binary expression, which in my case, a binary expression would be a plus. So plus sign means that there's always something on the left and there's always something on the right so if we encountered a binary expression and let's actually look at the AST representation of that binary expression if I encounter this then I get the left operator token and the right let's go to binary expression so I get something on the left I get something on the right and uh, um, where is the operator token oh yeah so I immediately uh, extract from the node the specific objects I I am able to extract and uh, yeah, I just concatenate whatever is on the left. I add the operator. Uh, I have a small list of uh, string mappings from a kind. So in this uh, case, the kind, the operator token is 39. And uh, if we go to supported tokens, So in, in this case, uh, I literally look at TypeScripts, uh, available syntax kinds, and there's a plus token, and it's 39. So I know for a fact that 39 would be a plus. So 39 plus token. And also I was able to look at the uh, string. Right, I use the same approach for knowing that I will be returning a string for a function. Let's actually go to my function definition. So <clears throat> this function give message is a function declaration. It has a name, which is give message. It has parameters. I know for a fact that this will be a string, a type string, which is how I am able to map the string I'm getting as a string slice. I've got a separate submap for it. And uh, the function type is a kind of 146 which is a string and let me go to my function declaration print function so this is a print function function so we parse the incoming parameters I concatenate them. I know what I want to have as a type, which was a string slice. Uh, and I've got <clears throat> I've got my return type as a string. Uh, it's actually mapped in here, and I can concatenate the new line. I do some weird shit and uh, all in all 
after I collect everything and I map the supported kind names and uh, if I go to this and <clears throat> and for example when when we want to process the arguments of the incoming function I know for a fact that I don't want to just have a string in here I want to have a slice of a string because I don't want to consume the uh, the string with this give message and the only thing I actually map in the function uh, arguments is yeah string keyword mapping to this so I showcased the thing um, let me get rid of that so now you'll be able to see that the message again is different compiling message is the same as I just left in here uh, as a demo <laughs> so I'm not covering the case where um, so in JavaScript there is no main function you can just write code as it is and it will be processed as it is as for Rust let me clear that whoop as for Rust it does require main function to work so I'll do it by hand because this already goes <laughs> outside the scope of uh, whatever I wanted to do so if you take a look I tested it and it worked um, if you run the code it should work so the intent of JavaScript was kind of successfully parsed into Rust code a really minimal Rust code and it's able to run and if I did some more effort I would have the entire script done <clears throat> so there you go and um, I really hope that in uh, some future maybe someone will create a complete JavaScript to Rust code because you kind of can understand the intent of a program and just in order to not have the entire infrastructure of node set up on your machine you can you, you would be able to just run a program that was interpreted for you in the native uh, native uh, language so there you go I hope you like it and uh, see you next time